Welcome back to the 2023 College Football Bowl Predictions and Betting Locks, and let's get right into it. A lot to talk about today, and let's start with a recap of last week conference championships. So, altogether, we went plus 0.8. So, on the season so far, we're up 11.4 units. Let's start with the Friday night games. We had Oregon minus 9.5 against Washington. Washington puts up a great performance to win that one outright, which ended Bo Nix's Heisman hopes and college football playoff hopes. So a lot of loss for Oregon there. Liberty won easily in the Conference USA Championship. Texas won easily in the Dr. Pepper Big 12 Championship. Toledo lost to Miami, Ohio in the MAC. Boise State easily covers the minus two on the road in the Mountain West Championship. Impressive performance there. Then we had Alabama in the SEC Championship. They pretty much dominated Georgia aside from that first possession all game on both lines of scrimmage. Alabama makes the college football playoff later in the video when I talk about Florida State's bowl game I'll get into the committee decision there but Alabama covers for us the plus five and a half they win outright just like I predicted and then SMU against Tulane SMU plus four hits for us again on the road impressive performance by the backup QB there App State loses to Troy in the Sun Belt Championship Michigan beats Iowa in the Big Ten Championship. And then our last betting lock was Louisville, plus three. I thought they'd win outright. They ended up losing by 10 in that one. Sloppy game by both offenses. Uh, obviously, Florida State had the third stringer in there, but the defense carried. But it wasn't enough. Again, I'll talk about Florida State in that college football playoff selection. But again, once again, this is the betting locks record plus 11.4 units. I'll give a free lock of the week here, but click in the top right to get on our discord for all sports. We have college basketball starting up NFL picks, college football picks. But let's start out with my college football playoff predictions, and then I'll get into the bowls in chronological order. But since we won't really have any opt outs in these two games, let's start with them. So I'm going to pick Michigan against Alabama here spreads about one and a half. Michigan lost Zach Winter in that Ohio State game. Pretty pivotal loss there on the O-line. Didn't really see it in that Iowa game. So I'm going to pick Michigan here against Alabama. I think a lot of people have just shrugged off that Auburn uh, close call for Bama. I mean, as I did as well, picking them in the SEC championship. And I think that Michigan will obviously have the chip on their shoulder. They've had it for, you know, the past five weeks of the regular season ending and then obviously conference championship week Michigan really by just being 13 and 0 and all the debate centering around FSU has kind of squeaked under the radar here not a lot of people talking about the scandal you know did Harbaugh know about it who knows I think this Michigan team can win this game it's going to come down to the offensive fronts I think though that Michigan will be able to pass the ball a little bit more than they have against Alabama. A lot of people are talking about, oh, can Michigan run it enough? But I think this Michigan team is different than the ones we've seen in the past. The loss to TCU last year was underwhelming, and then the year before, they got blown up. So I think that this is the year that they stand up to the test. I could see this game going either way, but I'm going to pick Michigan here as the slight favorite. Then number two, Washington, four and a half point dogs against Texas and I'm going to pick the Huskies outright and here's your free lock of the week lock in Huskies plus four and a half everyone's talking about this Husky passing passing game against a suspect Texas secondary and while I agree with that matchup I think that's way too obvious for this to be how the game is won I think that Washington their defense continues to get underrated and they seem to step up and down to the competition they're playing. Key example being that Oregon game last time. They beat Oregon twice this season. The first one at home was a little fluky. They left no doubts in Las Vegas a couple Fridays ago, and I'm going to pick the Huskies here outright. Texas very much has the home field advantage here and will, again, if they win this one and get to the national championship, which will be in Houston. Not a lot of people are picking Washington here. They are the significant underdogs at four and a half, but I like the points. If Texas does win, I think it could be close. I could also see a blowout for Texas, but I think that Washington will step up here, get physical on the fronts, more physical than people are getting, giving them credit for. Texas is also a lot better in my mind than a lot of people have had them throughout the majority of the season. This is a physical Texas team. I wouldn't want to go up against them, but for this game, I'm going to pick Washington in the underdog spot, get a little frisky here with the Huskies to win that one. 
So now let's go to the start of bowl season. We've got Ohio against Georgia Southern in the Myrtle Beach Bowl. I'm going to pick Georgia Southern here. So for a lot of these on the ESPN Bowl Pick'em, I'll just give you uh, some of the pointers that I'm seeing here. Georgia Southern is the favorite here. These max teams are not that good. And a lot of people on these bowl pickems just pick by the record. So Ohio, since they're nine and three, they're just picking them blindly over Florida Southern or Georgia Southern. But I'm going with Georgia Southern. They've played the harder schedule. They've looked like the better team for the vast majority of the season. Not too many opt outs on either side. I like Georgia Southern here. Obviously, you get the immense value with only 11% of people if that's updated by ESPN picking them but I'm going to have them there. Louisiana against Jacksonville State, and Jacksonville State gets their wish uh, getting to the bowl game there. And not too many opt-outs on either side, but Louisiana will be starting their third-string quarterback, Chandler Fields. So they are close underdogs, and I'm going to take them here. I just see the value with 25% of people picking them. Give me the Raging Cajuns. Weird things always happen in bowl season. Jacksonville State looks to be the better team on paper, but... I'll take Louisiana here. Then App State against Miami, Ohio. And it looks like it's going to be Maddox Cop for Miami, Ohio, their third string quarterback. And I'm just going to have App State winning again. I'm like fading the Mac. And App State is a heavy favorite here, starting their pretty much regular quarterback, Joey Aguilar. So I'm going to pick App State here. They don't look to be affected by injury or opt outs. So I like the Mountaineers. Fresno State against New Mexico State. I went back and forth on this one. We'll see if Pavia is able to play in this one. There is some optimism that he will. Uh, and in that case, I'm going to take New Mexico State at home. I think they're the better team here. Fresno State has been up and down over the course of the season. Got off to that hot start. Kind of faded away ever since. And this is pretty much a true road game because New Mexico State fans should be out for this one. This is the best record they've had in years despite coming up short in that Conference USA Championship game. I like the Aggies to get it done here. Another one I was laboring with, Mountain West against UCLA, Boise State retain the interim head coach there. And I'm still going to take UCLA. It looks like Garbers will start for UCLA, whereas uh, Boise State is dealing with some issues. Uh, Taylor Green is in the transfer portal. So who knows who could get the start? It looks like C.J. Tiller, a uh, true freshman, will. So there's a lot of uncertainty with this team, and obviously Cobbs has been out since Week 10, uh, and Maddox Madsen, their normal quarterback, is also out for the season. So I like UCLA to win, again, pretty much true home game. Uh, a lot of the stats about this one is that SoFi Stadium is actually closer to the UCLA campus than the Rose Bowl where they actually play. So I like UCLA to get it done there. Independence Bowl, Texas Tech against Cal, and I like Cal to get it done here. They're about two-point underdogs. It looks like Mendoza will start for Cal. I don't think it really matters. They don't do a lot of their offensive output through the air. They did look impressive at UCLA in their final game to get to this spot. Texas Tech looks to have a little more turnover on their offensive side in the transfer portal. About four wide receivers are in it and tight end. Taj Brooks, uh, powerful running back, will play. Uh, so this will definitely be a running matchup uh, between these two teams. And I like Cal to pick it up. Only 20% picked and plus 115 underdogs. I'll have to hammer them there. Old Dominion, famous toastery bowl. I haven't heard of that one before. We'll go with Old Dominion here. Western Kentucky loses three members of their offensive line to the transfer portal, uh, while Old Dominion loses, you know, a few wide receivers. And then also Jason Henderson, star linebacker, nation's leading tackler, will miss the game for Old Dominion. I don't think that really matters enough. I'll take Old Dominion, the slight favorites, but only 14% picked on the bowl mania. UTSA, great career for Frank Harris, and I'm going to take them to win. Looks like their coach will be retained there. Uh, minus 360 favorites, double-digit favorites. And I like the UTSA Roadrunners to get it done there. Syracuse will win this one. It appears Schrader will be back in full health for Syracuse. So that's a good sign for them. South Florida, 6-6 six and six season. Great season for them. We're tied with Alabama 3-3 three three at halftime. But I just don't think that they have what it what they need to get it done against an ACC team in Syracuse that has been mid at times, but I think they will win this. 
UCF against Georgia Tech. I, I like UCF to win here. Malzahn earned the, his contract extension. Not a lot of opt-outs on both sides. I like UCF. I think they're the slightly better team here. On the bottom, I'm going pure value play. Northern Illinois, minus 105. You know, pretty much 50-50 shot, but they're only 35% picked. So I'll go with Northern Illinois there. Duke against Troy. And obviously you had Mike Elko leaving the Blue Devils there. So a lot of turnover. A lot of upheaval happening. Manny Diaz will not be reporting for the bowl game, it doesn't look like. And Troy also lost their head coach to Tulane, Summerall. Um, great coach there, but they are minus 300 to win this game. And I like Troy to win this one. Not a lot of opt-outs, um, just the coach. So I don't think that really matters in the grand scheme. I like Troy to win this one easy. And then Air Force, plus 130 against James Madison. James Madison somehow has a lot of opt-outs and players in the transfer portal. Their coach, Kurt Signetti, accepted an offer to be the new coach at Indiana, so I have to think that that's some of the transfer portal hijinks we're seeing there. Um, and maybe that same roster would be decent in a Big Ten that had a lot of middling to low-level teams this year. I like Air Force, not much turnover on that roster there. They haven't had the best back end of the season, but... And only 17% picked in a narrow underdog. I like the Air Force Falcons to get it done there. Then Utah State, I heard they picked up Petras uh, from Iowa, who couldn't even play at Iowa this year. So, you know, that's bad for them. But I'll pick them to win on the home turf in the famous Idaho Potato Bowl, the Mountain West site against Georgia State. And then this is the heaviest favorite of bowl season. It looks like South Alabama over Eastern Michigan, once again, fading the Mac in favor of the Sun Belt. Northwestern against Utah. Uh, Bryson Barnes and Nate Johnson are transferring, but it looks like the big farmer will stay for the bowl game. I like Utah to win that one there. Again, heavy favorites. And same thing with San Jose State. Coastal Carolina has a surprising amount of opt-outs. San Jose State looks like they're dealing with a uh, similar team that they have throughout. We'll see what will happen. Uh, looks like Ethan Vasco will start for Coastal Carolina, their third string, with McCall out um, after a serious concussion. Um, so hopefully he's able to continue his career there. But I'll take the Spartans in this one in the Hawaii Bowl. Then we have the Golden Gophers, the only 5-7 and seven team to make it. Highest academic progress rate. Can't speak to the strength of schedule on that Minnesota campus, but they earn the quick lane bowl where I think they will win against Bowling Green. Once again, fading the Mac. It looks like they will be starting Cole Kramer with their first two quarterbacks out again for this Minnesota team. I'm not sure how much the quarterbacks really matter, especially against Bowling Green. They haven't done much on that end the whole season. So I like Minnesota there. First responder bowl, obviously JT Daniels out. That just ended his career before the bowl game. A little bit surprising there uh, for the concussion issues. I like Texas State to get it done there. Uh, they are the slight favorites. And next page, we've got the guaranteed rate bowl. Kansas Jayhawks, big favorite against UNLV, and I'll ride with the Jayhawks. It looks like Bean will still be starting. Remember, this is like a similar to the Utah situation with Daniels here. Thought he'd be back multiple times, um, but it doesn't appear he will with that back injury. Uh, I'll still take Jason Bean over a fraudulent UNLV team. Then Military Bowl. I'll take Virginia Tech. Not really sure how they moved up to this much of favorites, but they're only 17% pick. This is the pure value play. Obviously, Tulane lost their coach to Houston, so they've got that area of recruiting there. Not really sure what's going on with why Virginia Tech is favored by so much, uh, but I'll go with the people who know something and pick them there, especially if they're only getting 17% picked in the Bull Mania pool. West Virginia, minus 210 favorites against North Carolina. Again, pure value play here, 26%. North Carolina has just fallen off. I expect Drake May to opt out. So I like West Virginia. I think they'll be battling harder to get this bowl in here in the Dukes Mayo Bowl, even though this one is played in Charlotte, I think, there. Holiday Bowl, USC against Louisville. USC could have a couple opt-outs. Already have Caleb Williams, Brendan Rice could opt out as well. So we'll see there. I like Louisville to win this. They're about seven point favorites. Miller Moss could start for USC. Uh, we'll see how good he can do, but 
I like Louisville to win. Their defense is good. We'll see if what USC can do. But without that stellar offense, I don't know what this USC defense can do despite Lincoln Riley allegedly proposing to overhaul the defense there. I don't think they can get it done in one month. They'll have to work on that over the offseason. Miami against Rutgers. Again, pure value play here. Pretty much a 50-50 shot by Vegas, but Rutgers only 13% picked. Van Dyke is in the portal, and Emory Jones out for the season, obviously, after suffering that brutal injury against Florida State. So, Ja'Curry Brown will get his first action of the 2023 season there. And so, I'm just going to take Rutgers here, just pure value play. Pop-Tarts Bowl, only bowl with the edible mascot. Give me Kansas State. Avery Johnson will be starting here. Will Howard transferred away, and they might be better with him anyways. Give me Kansas State easy here over NC State. That should be one of the better bowl games. Then you've got the Alamo Bowl. Gabriel's out for the Oklahoma. Arizona under Jed Fish. Very good team. Uh, I'll ride the wave and go with Arizona. Only 29% picked and they're the favorite. Give me the Wildcats here uh, in Texas in the Alamo there. Gator Bowl. I'm going to go with Clemson. Bit of a fav favorites here. Uh, Kentucky. Ray Davis will actually play despite uh, declaring for the NFL draft. Clemson has a couple opt-outs and could have more on the defensive side. I still like for now Clemson. We'll see what happens. Now we're getting to these bowl matchups that are near the end of the month, so a lot can change. I reserve the right to change my picks, uh, but I'm going with Clemson there. Then Notre Dame against Oregon State. There are plenty of opt-outs to watch out for on both sides. Martinez got arrested for the DUI. All havoc is breaking loose uh, for Oregon State there. Notre Dame has a lot of opt-outs as well and could have a lot more. Alt uh, is one to look for. So let's go with Notre Dame here. They're heavy favorites, uh, but yeah, that won't be a good game to watch, I fear, because, you know, just a lot of opt-outs on both sides. So those rankings could be uh, ultimately meaningless there, the number 16 against the number 19. Liberty Bowl, Iowa State is heavy favorites. Not really sure why. They're just the better team, obviously, but eight points in Memphis's stadium is crazy. Uh, so we'll have to go with it, especially when they're the 34% pick team. And we'll ride with the Cyclones. We'll see if anything changes. Memphis doesn't look to be too affected by opt-outs or anything. Iowa State might have a few guys in the portal, but Let's ride with Rocco Becht and the team to get it done there. Then Ohio State against Missouri. Ohio State is going to be rattled by opt-outs here. Missouri should be playing. They're playing for this bowl win. Ohio State obviously upset to be in this scenario uh, while Missouri is ecstatic. Would have made the playoff next year. I think Missouri is going to take this one. They're the favorites. And again, 26% picked. Easy, easy easy pick here. Ohio State won't have a lot of their guys. I expect this to revert probably back to 50-50 if people ever check on these again because a lot of these Ohio State guys will probably opt out, but let's go with Missouri here. Easy money. Take the Tigers. Then the Peach Bowl, Penn State, Chop Robinson opted out. Obviously, they lose both coordinators there. Meanwhile, Lane Kiffin congratulates people for opting to go into the transfer portal, opting out for the NFL draft. So one of a kind personality there. I think both of these teams have been pretty fraudulent, but I think that Penn State has been more fraudulent. Ole Miss doesn't seem to be affected by any more opt-outs, and then Penn State still could have a few more. We'll have to keep watch on that. I like Ole Miss to win here pretty much 50-50. Penn State is the slight favorite, I think four points right now, but it could revert back depending on the opt-out situation. I like Ole Miss to win here, and among the two fraudulent teams, I think the SEC one is going to be better this season there. Next bowl, all right, we've got Maryland against Auburn in the Music City Bowl. I'm going to take Maryland here, only 32% picked, pure value play. could see this one going either way, but if most people don't think Maryland's going to win against Auburn, an Auburn team that was very fraudulent. People are quick to forget that M NMSU loss uh, when they play, you know, Alabama down to the wire in their last regular season game. This could be a total letdown spot for them. So I'm going to go with Maryland to win that one there. Then Orange Bowl, give me Georgia minus 14. And this is where I'll take a chance to talk about what I thought about the committee selection, putting Florida State at number five. Ultimately, I do agree with a lot of what uh, the analysts are saying. I think the committee got it right. What I don't agree with is the way the committee did it, because 
my rankings consistently had Texas ahead of Florida State. Even with Tr- Jordan Travis, they had a better resume, even with the loss, than Florida State. So I was fine with Texas jumping them. I don't really know why they jumped them at this juncture because Louisville was pretty much the same caliber of team as Oklahoma State. And obviously, Texas had the style points by scoring a bunch on offense, whereas Florida State had their third stringer in. A third stringer that wouldn't have even played in the college football playoff. So I don't really understand why Florida State was only dropped at this juncture. Alabama's win was significantly more. And then I also have a complaint when, you know, the committee uses, oh, who would win it in a football game, you know, Texas or Alabama against Florida State. Well, I agree that those two would beat Florida State, but why can't we go, why can't we put Florida State further down the rankings? Because clearly Georgia is going to beat Florida State. In fact, this is a really sour matchup for Florida State fans because Georgia still might be power rated as the number one team uh, in the nation, maybe tied with Michigan in the Vegas power rankings. Meanwhile, Florida State without Travis doesn't seem to have much of a chance. And, you know, obviously they're not going to be motivated. You know, maybe maybe Georgia will suffer from the same exact effects. I like Georgia to win here. Don't like how the committee did it. I think if they were really going to put Florida State down just for not having Travis, then, you know, put them below Ohio State as well. They're probably power rated below them as well by a significant margin without Travis. So, you know, I don't like how they did it. I would have been fine if Florida State was in the playoff. I think the committee got it right at the end of the day, but I don't like how they did it. I would have liked if, you know, the committee would have put a one-loss team above FSU back when, you know, they didn't have those resume building wins. And then to take it away because the third string was in against a Louisville team that was, you know, theoretically better than Oklahoma State doesn't make a lot of sense to me. But obviously Bama's win against Georgia was massive. And then people also discredit Florida State for playing close to all these teams. And then people are quick to forget about Alabama almost losing to Auburn minus that Hail Mary play. And yes, yes, I know it's tough to play on the road. Florida State also had to play two SEC opponents on the road. Uh, Let's not forget about that. But yeah, Florida State going to have a tough matchup here. I don't expect them to win. And, you know, they can only hope that, you know, next year they can make it into the playoff and maybe prove some people wrong. So we'll see what happens there. Next, Barstool Sports Arizona Bowl. Wyoming are the favorites in this game. Uh, Toledo, fraudulent. All of these teams in the MAC again, fraudulent. I like Andrew Paisley. And the Wyoming Cowboys to win this one. Again, 17% pick just because of the worst record. Give me Wyoming to win that one. Relies Quest Bowl. LSU, one of the heaviest favorites, also in bowl season, but I do expect Jaden Daniels and neighbors to opt out probably. Braylon Allen has already opted out for Wisconsin, so there you go. This will not be any fun to watch. It looks like a 40-0 to zero LSU blowout in that one. On the first, we've got the Fiesta Bowl, Oregon Ducks. Tough draw for them, especially since Bo Nix will actually be playing. I would have liked to see them against Georgia. Obviously, yes, I know the bowl ties prevent stuff like that but you could have put him against Missouri or Ohio State or something like that Oregon Missouri would have been very nice to see but instead we get Liberty against them there was a lot of upheaval among fans about Liberty against SMU and how that worked you know you're honoring the strength of schedule for the, putting Alabama in but then Florida but then Liberty gets in at 13 and 0 but also the worst worst strength of schedule in the nation that actually takes skill to be the worst at strength of schedule, but since you're the good team, you know, you don't get to play yourself uh, is kind of the logic there, but Liberty gets in. I think they that's the right choice, but it's tough that they had to play Oregon if they would have played, you know, Ohio State, put Ohio State in that no-win scenario with all those opt-outs. Maybe we'd get a better game, or maybe even against Florida State. I mean, that would have been hilarious, but yeah, I like Oregon to win easy. This could be this might actually be the heaviest favorite of bowl season. And then Tennessee against Iowa. This could be interesting to watch. We'll see what happens here. Tennessee is one of the best offenses Iowa will have seen this whole season. Obviously, Iowa wrecked by injuries. Tennessee actually, surprisingly, had a lot of injuries, season-ending injuries over the course of the season as well. I like the Volunteers to get it done. Again, heavy favorites there. We'll see if Iowa can pull any hats out of the bag for the cheez It Citrus Bowl. Thank you for watching. Please be sure to like and subscribe and comment your thoughts below.